I get asked quite a bit if Ultima Online is only still played by 30 plus something men, chasing that dragon of nostalgia. And, or if perhaps, the only reason I still play the game is because I'm trying to relive my glory days back from middle school. Like it's something again that these morons that are fucking 30 years old and are trying to relive their glory days playing Ultima Online in middle school keep trying to fucking put into these games and they make them worse. They were shit then and they were shit now. Yeah, maybe so. I do truly think that has a lot to do with it. But not the entire thing. Let me be clear real quick. Later on in that clip, Asmongold did actually address that maybe Ultima Online was a good game because his chat was going crazy, spamming Ultima Online. Stop slandering Ultima Online. What I'm saying is games like that, sure. Maybe Ultima Online was the greatest game ever. You see what I'm saying? So don't take it out on him. I'm actually taking that clip and turning it into something different where we're gonna be talking more and more about Ultima Online and is it just nostalgia for me or is it actually something real? I've got many fond memories of this game, mostly sucking at it, dying a lot, and you know, not ever really accomplishing much. But on the other side, I keep seeing all these new games coming out. I keep trying them, yet I find much less joy from them than I do Ultima. It tends to be the same hamster wheel game. I also see more people recently than ever that have never played Ultima Online jumping on the bandwagon of a custom server called Outlands. Now it is by no means a AAA MMORPG with 500,000 to a million players online at any time. In fact, it's more like 2.5k, which in the past year has almost doubled. What is it about the game that keeps me around? I'd say the biggest thing is probably being in a shared world with other players. Knowing my actions in the game will reflect me as a person in the game and people will remember them. I become my actions, so to speak. It seems like nowadays MMORPGs are becoming more and more single player games. You sit in a node, whether it be a city, a garrison, or whatever NPC queues you up for the next dungeon, PvP battle, or raid. Once you're in, if your group even says hello, then you're off to a good start. Then nothing is said until the very end where everyone says GG, TW, WP. Maybe some shit talking during a wipe, but overall it becomes just the same actions, over and over. No variables like a group of monsters appearing out of nowhere from another party, running back to the entrance from a failed attack. Or murderous PKs running in and attacking all the gold farmers. Then an epic battle ensues as people's guild comes to the rescue. Next thing you know, a boss spawns and multiple guilds are fighting for the boss kill while also killing each other and avoiding boss mechanics. I think one thing that would break this is if the game became much, much larger. But that could be fixed by just making more servers and keeping the server cap of the server at about where it's at. There's always that risk versus reward factor. When a nice item drops that's worth a nice chunk of change, do you stow it away and continue farming monsters? Or leave in fear of dying from another player or stolen straight from your bag by a thief? Which, by the way, playing a thief on UO Outlands has definitely been the most fun I've ever had playing an MMORPG, ever. Furthermore, do you attack the thief when he steals from you? What if he is prepared for PvP combat and it's a trick to get you to attack him? These are all questions that you have to decide for yourself while playing the game. Rather than just a monotonous instance of doing the same thing over and over and over with no risk, hoping that the item you're camping that dungeon or raid for drops. So essentially, the only risk that you're actually taking is time. One big complaint I hear about in modern MMORPGs is crafting is never worthwhile. By the time you get it up to be able to craft decent armor, the current entry level raid tier has better gear thus making it pointless. Sometimes the ingredients are locked behind an actual raid and that ingredient once again makes armor or a weapon that is less powerful than the same weapon that drops from that same monster. On UO Outlands, your armor and weapons helps you, but is more so powered up by your aspect and chain which is essentially your experience or level. Crafted armor is common enough, you can get it, but also the economy has a special place for it where you don't want to lose it, and you can make a pretty penny being a seller of these wares. Magic items do drop in dungeons and different grades, and they too can be sold in the open market, used or recycled into fuel for your aspects. Every game has wanted it to do housing. However, most don't do it right. No, no one's done it right since Ultima Online. It always gets brought up how Ultima Online did it right, and they really did. 
Having a house in the open world that people run by that you have decorated to your liking is a phenomenal feeling. It's your own piece of land. Sometimes you have quiet neighbors and sometimes you have unruly neighbors hosting PvP tournaments out front or murdering anyone that runs by. One thing that is the same amongst all MMORPGs and no different in Outlands, it's all about them looks, baby. <laughs> Your character has got to look fly. Most people will spend every last gold piece they got just for that yard of cloth they need to complete their outfit. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that it's only the systems and processes in the game that makes it great, and there's absolutely no nostalgia about it. I think everyone who played the retail version when it came out is bitten by the dragon and always chasing it. I also think that people in general are always trying to get that kid on Christmas feeling our first MMORPG gave us. I along with many others however have just found this is the best mixture of that nostalgia dragon and the grind we all bounce game to game for as well as a little guild vs guild drama and politics mixed in. I'd love to elaborate more and more on these type of topics so I invite you to the live streams that I do every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Saturday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern right here on YouTube. Feel free to join the community discord with almost 1100 members as of now. Also shout out to the Patreons, the channel members and you for liking this video for more discoverability for not just myself but UO Outlands as a whole. Also as a little extra do me a favor and comment below some of the systems and practices in your favorite game that you play and what it is that makes you really, really enjoy that and wish it was like that in other games as well. And if you want to know more about Ultima Online Outlands, check out this video. It's a really good video that kind of goes over at really high level. And uh, other than that, guys, Home Star Gaming out.